folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, it's December 1st, 2024. Can't believe how this year has flown by. This past year has brought us many devastating events throughout the world and a lot here in the U.S. Many p people believe that it's the beginning of birth pains, uh, changes that was foretold in the Bible. Yeah, what's going to happen next year? Many wonder about the New Madrid fault zone. Yeah, there was an earthquake late last night at 9.30 p.m. there in Missouri. You know, Missouri was one of 14 states in October, October 17th of this year, where they had the great uh, shakeout drill by the government, city officials. A lot of people, private citizens also participated. The New Madrid seismic zone spans more than 100 miles and averages over 200 small earthquakes every year. Let me bring this out close to an overpass in an interstate. I believe 18 people sent in reports to USGS that they did feel this earthquake. Drawn out in yellow is what they call the Mississippi Embayment. Um, it's a large area with a lot of sediment from the Mississippi um, Delta. Yeah. The New Madrid Seismic Zone lies at the northern end of the embayment and was the site of the large New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. The area is underlined with some really dangerous geology. The Real Foot Rift is an ancient failed continental rift, an algologen which dates back to the Precambrian breakup of the supercontinent Rodania. The more recent opening of the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. The more recent opening of the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico during the late Paleozoic to the early Mesozoic breakup of Pangaea uh, no doubt affected and may have partially reactivated the old rift. An Alacogan is a failed arm of a triple rift junction. Alacogans are part of a plate tectonics where oceanic and continental crust is continuously being created, destroyed, and rearranged on the Earth's surface. Rift zones are places where new crust is formed. An Alacogan is a rift zone that is no longer active. Uh, that's up for debate, isn't it? And I've talked about how um, with the recent earth changes going on, the weakening of the earth's magnetic field, ancient faults and ancient rift systems that are supposedly no longer active do seem to become recently reactivated. In the recent 1980s, visionaries, or what some call spiritual visionaries and futurists, um, claim to have provided clues to our changing planet, often dismissed as crazy prophets. Their thoughts for a new world were quickly ignored and laughed at. Um, there was one futurist um, whose name was Gordon Michael Scallion. I hadn't heard of him, but he evidently is a futurist, a teacher of consciousness studies and metaphysics, and a spiritual visionary. In the 1980s, he claimed to have had a spiritual awakening that helped him create a very detailed map of the future world, all stemming from a cataclysmic pole shift. The result, while not based on any scientific uh, data, nonetheless provided a vivid and compelling picture of the Earth ravaged by flooding. Scallion believed that a pole shift would stem from global warming, nuclear activity, and the, and the misuse of technology. Another prophet many of us have heard of, which is Edgar Cayce. He predicted a 16 to 20 degree shift, while Scallion predicted a 20 to tw uh, 45 degree shift. Cayce predicted that when both Mount Etna volcano in Italy and Mount Pili in Marconic erupted together, there will be approximately 90 days to evacuate the west coast 
before the massive flood claims the coastline. And you can see that here in this map. This supposedly is the map that the U.S. Navy put out for the future of America. And here we have the uh, New Madrid fault system going all the way up. Yeah, um, Illinois, Indiana, um, and then the, the west coast, or the east coast, excuse me, of the United States. Most compelling to a lot of people is the argument that an asteroid or comet collision with the Earth could cause an entire planet to shift. There was an article I read on Forbes where Professor Donald Turcott, an expert in planetary geology at the University of California, Davis, Earth and Planetary Science Department, said that the predictions of earthquakes causing a planetary shift in coastal flooding is for the most part nonsense. However, he went on to say that it was far more likely that an asteroid hit would cause a polar shift. This could ultimately lead, lead to cataclysmic changes in a map similar to uh, Scallion's original vision. With all this information and predictions about Earth changes that could be coming, uh, you wonder about the world's financial leaders. Do they know something? Considering how many of the richest families have been grabbing up massive amounts of farmland around the world. All property is, you notice that they've been buying, is far away from coastal areas and uh, considered locations for self-survival uh, farming. Those of you that follow me um, will know that I often talk about how um, when we had the last shift in our um, geomagnetic field, or flip as many people talk about it, that the continents actually moved. So I took a look today at the different earthquakes along the east coast because we know the east coast is slowly moving west. And you can see all the uh, recent earthquakes lately. There was a 1.8 earthquake on the 25th. And that's near also another failed rift system. And then there was another one down here by Mississippi, Canton, Mississippi, a 2.5. That was on the 28th of um, this last month. And then I took a look farther north um, up to this failed rift system. And there was a magnitude 2.0 near Fairview Park, Indiana. That was on the 29th. Every year they do have the uh, shakeout scenario the shakeout drill on October 17th 17 states within this location had their annual shakeout I don't know if they learned anything from it where they might be failing in different types of uh, uh, get ready scenarios I mean what can they do except you know spend the money that we've been sending to other countries to uh, reinforce the bridges the uh, gas lines, our infrastructure, communication, which we know they're not doing. 26 earthquakes within the last month along this location of the New Madrid fault system. Six within the last week. Looks like the, the largest was probably today, uh, the magnitude 2.7. This 2.7 was located in an area that I've talked about recently again. It's an area where the fault zone, the fault that goes from east to west is broke, or you can consider it going from north to south, but it's broke, and that's why the river and rivers and streams often follow fault zones while it makes this sudden new turn here. Yeah, I got it drawn out, the different faults, fault zones. Uh, the one in blue is uh, what ruptured in 1811 and 1812. People should be prepared for a large earthquake. History does have a way of repeating itself. You know, there is simple things that you can do like bolting large objects to the wall that could fall on you. Um, have a wrench to turn off the gas. Yeah, gas fires are horrible. Can burn down structures what they call soft structures where you have maybe a garage under your home 
should be retrofitted. You know, it's a misconception where people think that smaller earthquakes actually release the pressure so we don't have a big one. No, that is just an indication that the pressure has grown and that a larger one is in the future. Once in a while, we need a reminder of what could happen in the future so that people do get prepared. I say this in every one of my videos, be prepared, and so many people are not. If you look at the map again of the flooding for the New Madrid fault system, and then uh, go to this area, which is sediment, which is all fill. Earthquakes do travel through sediment a lot farther and do a lot more damage than, say, something on bedrock. When they had the 1811, 1812 earthquakes, huge fissures opened up. And earthquakes continued for years and years and years. Bells in Boston, Massachusetts actually rang from the earthquake. A lot of the land sunk, became swamp, which is now the uh, real foot rift system is a good example of that. And that would be up over here. Yeah, we got real foot lake now. A lot of people that were living in that location back then. Yeah, they up and moved because their fertile farmland became unusable and they never came back. Just something to think about. Anyways, what is your thought about this? Uh, you know, I also think about comets, how the goods going from east to west, yeah, that would be interrupted. How long would it take them to rebuild the bridges? Yeah, for the uh, transportation of goods. Yeah, and could it be deliberately created um, by some foreign government to create a large earthquake in this area to devastate the United States? With the incoming president talking about 100% tariffs on foreign governments from their goods coming into the U.S., uh, would that be enough for them to create a disaster on, on the United States? So what are your thoughts? What's your reasoning for following the earthquakes along the New Madrid fault system? Other than history does have a way of repeating itself. Do you have uh, family or friends that live in this area? Do you live in this area where a large earthquake um, could affect you? Please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.